Hi everyone, I'm Cathy Martin, a Senior Associate here at Harper MacLeod. Now, it's strange times for us all at the moment, but we are still here to help you with any estate planning that you want to carry out. Now, with having more time in your hand, you might be thinking about how you would like your estate to pass. You might even be thinking, can I not just write this down or type it out in a piece of paper and then I can just sign it and date it and that's me got a will in place. However, this will often have unintended consequences, particularly that the document that you've prepared won't be recognised as a valid will and you'll be treated as though you didn't have a will and that's known as being intestate. Now, in homes throughout the country, there'll be many invalid and homemade wills that will then cause issues for surviving family members, particularly disappointed beneficiaries, people not receiving what they should have, and then large legal fees to sort all these issues out. And so with this in mind, I'm going to look at some common pitfalls with homemade wills and how these can be avoided. And the first thing to, we're going to look at is detailing specific items. And as individuals, we tend to think of specific items we have in our estate, such as our card, our house, bank account, things like that. And homemade wills usually detail specific items to go to specific people, but they don't then deal with everything else that's left after this. And so we can guide you through your estate planning and dealing with your estate as a whole and making sure there's no part of it that isn't dealt with under your will and actually ends up going somewhere that you didn't intend it to. Another common pitfall concerns um, where beneficiaries that you have left something to actually have died before you. So legacies to individuals who have died before you simply fall on your death. And what that means is it's just treated as though your will never included them. And the legacy won't automatically be passed on to the children in their place, as people often think. And, and generally, it's only where there's specific wording in the will that the children of someone that's died before you would receive in their place. So, for example, if you left a sum of money to your nephew and he then died before you, his children would only receive that sum of money in his place if you included specific wording in your will that says that that's what you want to happen. Another common pitfall concerns young beneficiaries. Now, in Scotland, a beneficiary is entitled to receive their share of an estate at age 16. And many think that that, pa that child's parent will be able to look after the funds on their behalf until they're much older than 16, perhaps until they're age 21 or 25. However, unless a will contains specific trust provisions that allow the parent to hold the funds for the young beneficiary, then their parent or guardian can only hold that share until the child turns 16 and at that point the money must be made over to them. Also in relation to young beneficiaries, unless a will details who is to be appointed as a guardian for any children under age 16, then it would actually be for your surviving family members and friends to make a decision amongst themselves as to who would apply for guardianship and to go through the necessary formal process to do so. So it definitely makes sense for your will to detail who you would wish to be appointed as guardians to your children. And finally, a major pitfall in relation to um, homemade wills and wills generally at the moment is the signing of the will. Now, for a will to be valid in Scotland, it needs to be signed on every page and there must also be one independent adult witness who actually witnesses the signing of the will and then also signs the will in the last page. Now, prior to the current outbreak, this was usually a straightforward task um, and the signing was usually done before a solicitor who would act as a witness and would also ensure that the will is signed properly. However, just now, because of social social distancing measures, um, we can't carry out face-to-face -face meetings at, at the moment. And also for many people, having an independent witness physically present in the room at the time of, time of signing. So for example, your friend or your neighbour is also going to be impossible due to social distancing. However, 
Current guidance from the Law Society allows a solicitor to witness a client signing their will by way of a video call. So we can sign your will with you by way of video call. And the practicalities around how this will work in practice are something that my colleague Lauren Wright is going to cover further in a separate blog. Now, ultimately, having your will prepared by an experienced solicitor will allow them to think of all the things you may not have considered and draft your will in a way that fully reflects your wishes. You'll also have peace of mind that your will is valid, so that will be a certainty in what are uncertain times. Now, we are still here to help you with all your estate planning needs. And if you want to get your affairs in order at this time, please just get in touch at harpermcleod.co.uk and we'll be happy to help.